Please welcome Dr. Lisa to the stage. Thank you very much. Now, I'm an astronomer, but I want to talk to you today about data, big data. So who's old enough to remember LPs? Yeah? Good. Good audience. So in those days, all we had to worry about in terms of data storage was where we were going to put a handful of LPs, a few dozen books, maybe your address book in which you'd write your mum's phone number and your auntie's address. But nowadays, if you think about it, all your information, your whole digital identity is stored in a computer. All your phone numbers, all your appointments, all your engagements, all your musical albums that you've gathered over decades, all the correspondence that you have, emails, probably over more than a decade, your work, all your files, and even your bank account information. All that is stored electronically. So do we even bother to think about who's looking after this information? And are we in danger of that information just disappearing completely? Now, this happened to me um, <laughs> last year. I was giving a lecture um, at a society, a society of Astronomical uh, Enthusiasts. And I got to the talk. And uh, as normal, I, I've got my laptop out, plug it in, and I've got the black screen of death. <sighs> so I'm standing up on the stage. I've got about 100 people in front of me. Some of them have traveled 100 kilometers to come and see the lecture, discovering the mysteries of the universe with beautiful images of space. And I'm standing there, just me, no pictures. And I do an hour-long lecture like this. So it was good fun for me, but when I got home, it was no fun because I realized my data were not only lost, unrecoverable, but I hadn't backed them up for over a month. So my laptop was dead, and this was a particularly important time in work, and I'd lost all that work completely. So I only had myself to blame. All I could do was say, well, I was stupid. I didn't back up every day like you're supposed to. But where do you keep your backup disk? Right next to your computer? The data integrity is not assured. And even if you leave it to the professionals, you're not assured of saving all this information. Last year, somebody at Google accidentally deleted 150,000 email accounts, Gmail. Now, if you think that's bad, losing all your email from perhaps the last five or 10 years, and all the attachments, and all that information, and all your contacts, it can be even worse for business. Now, an Irish um, risk management company estimated that 46% of businesses that have a major data loss, in fact, fold immediately. They never recover from that data loss. And in science, the loss of data could mean the loss of literally years and years of your work, the blood, sweat, and tears, and millions of dollars of investment. So think about your data and think about where it's living. Now, I'm part of a global astronomy project. It's a $2 billion collaborative project called the Square Kilometer Array. It will be the world's biggest radio telescope, and we're hosting it right here in Australia with our partners in South Africa. This telescope is so huge, it's so distributed, it will generate the amount of data equivalent to 10 times the current global internet traffic. And there is no computer in existence currently that can deal with this amount of data. So we're relying on the ingenuity of the IT business and computer industries to enable us to have solutions in the future to deal with this amount of data. Imagine discovering the secrets of the universe and then not being able to back them up and losing them again. <laughs> so by the time we build the telescope in the mid-2020s, next decade, we hope that the ingenuity and hard work of the IT industry will allow us to store and uh, process these data. If not, the telescope could be rendered useless. So let me leave you with this thought. This is a chap called John, who I work with. 
Now, John O'Sullivan was searching for black holes. He was doing an astronomical project. And he, he was searching for radiation from black holes. And he didn't find any radiation from black holes. But what he did do is invent a way to transmit data across a room without interference. Now, that idea was patented. And it's now the basis of fast, reliable wireless internet, Wi-Fi, that's used in 4 billion devices around the world. So next time you use wireless internet, think about John, who lives in Sydney, who invented this wonderful technology. And don't forget to back up your data. Thank you.